If you found my channel via the thumbnail on screen now, then this video will likely be of interest to you. I basically go through all of the different features within the free version of the Stop Motion Studio app. And to make your life even easier, I put timestamps to all the different parts in the description box. So if there's just something specific that you need to know, hopefully you'll be able to find that down below and you can jump straight to that point in the video. So once you have opened up the Stop Motion Studio app, you want to go to New Movie. And here we have Through the Phone, My Little Pool Table. So we're all ready to start. But to get the best results for stop motion animation, there are some things in here that we need to change, some settings which I'm now going to talk you through. So on the left hand side, you'll have this cog wheel. And if we click on that, there are all these options. So on the first icon, it looks a bit like a speed dial like you see in a car. And this is the frame rate for your film. So you can just scroll along, pull this across, and you're changing your frame rate. And you can go all the way up to 30 frames per second. Now, if you were shooting a feature film, you'd probably be doing 24 frames per second. But for most amateurs and even TV shows, the common frame rate is 12 frames per second. So I recommend you starting with that and seeing how you get on. So you just make sure that the orange line above lines up with 12 frames. And then we're all set on that. Now, if we go on to the next icon, there are some fades. These are kind of like transitions that you can add to your film. Don't need to worry about that at the moment. The third icon we have got is aspect ratios. So this can be important. I made a video all about this and you want to set this to wherever you want your film to end up. So if you want to uh, put your film on Instagram, you may want to go to a square aspect ratio. This is going to put up these um, black bars either side. And this will be a guide so that you can make sure that your action gets framed in the middle. There's also portrait, which would work for a phone shape. And then there's classic um, wide screen. You've even got a letterbox. So this is more like cinema mode. This is like a proper movie wide screen. And the first one is the default, which is 16 by nine. So that is the shape of your phone or this YouTube video that you're watching now. So I'm gonna stick with 16 by nine for this one. We go to the next icon. Um, here are some effects. A lot of these are premium, so you'd have to buy the premium app. But for the basic app, you've got normal and you've also got this sort of binocular frame. Um, I'm going to stick with normal. I don't want anything like this, but feel free to play around. Um, then the next icon we've got is filters. So there isn't really a filter available on the free app. It looks as if you can get a sepia and other versions when you pay a little bit of money. And similarly, if we move along to the one that says 4K, if you want to record in high quality and 4K, you're going to need to pay for the premium version. But HD is perfectly OK for uploading to YouTube or Instagram or wherever else you want to. I still use HD for my videos as well. So this is fine. We can get started straight away in this free app. And the final icon we've got there is it looks like a little youtube logo and it's just options for for playback so whether you include the live frame this is the live frame in your playback whether you play back once or, or loop the animation it's sometimes it's good to loop because you want to see it over and over again and then there's a three second pause at the end of playback so you know when your animation has ended and then it's going to start playing again. So this is when you've finished animating and you want to preview what you've done. These are the options for that. So I'm going to put a loop and I'm going to take that off. So it's just going to keep looping when I play it back. And then you just want to push this tick when you're happy. So now we're all set up on that. We want to push the camera icon here to get ready to shoot our pictures. Now it's very easy to take a picture. As it says here, you just want to tap and you get a picture. Now, similar to Dragonframe, which is the professional software I normally use, you can use a ghost layer, which is sometimes called onion skinning. So if we move this slider up, 
like this, um, you can see the previous frame that I just took and the live frame. So if you're going to move something and line it up, um, this is going to show you what you just took so that you can quite easily line things back up again before you take the next picture. So that's quite a useful tool there. You also, if you want to see the live, you have to make sure that this is at top. So if, if this slider is in the middle, you're just going to see the frame you just took. You want to pull that up to the top to actually get your live view back as well. Now to take a picture, it's very simple. You just tap the red button and it's taken a picture. Again, playback is just this little play button here. You can see I've taken a load of lovely random wiggly photos there. Now, when you're doing animation, you don't really want to well, first of all, you don't want to be holding your phone like I am, and you don't want to have your phone set up somewhere um, and keep going in to tap and touch the picture because you're going to get this wiggle. The phone's going to move about. So there are two ways to get around that. The first way is this little icon above the red button. Again, it looks a bit like a timer. It is a timer. And you can set this up up to 90 seconds. So let's go with five seconds for this example and if you line up with the orange line to five seconds and hit the tick every five seconds it's going to take a picture so if we tap the red button you'll see that it's moving around the screen and i could i could move something and and then oh yeah my hand was in it so you can go in move your action and then bang it takes another picture go in move your action and then five seconds later, it takes another picture. And then you can just stop that whenever you want. But it means that you don't have to keep touching your phone because every five seconds or whatever you set it to, it's gonna take a new picture. Now, let's take the timer off. So that is the basics of how to take pictures. But to get really good stop motion, we need to go a bit further than that. So within this interface, you'll see this little slider icon at the bottom on the right hand side. And if we tap on that, we get all these other options. So if we go on to the first one, we have got camera and there are these premium options, green screen and remote camera. So with remote camera, I think that means you can Bluetooth to another device such as an iPad and then tap that to take the pictures or you can use your headphones in the jack. That used to be available on free, but now I think it's only available on premium. Now, you've also got the option here of your rear or your front camera. So if I switch to the front camera, you'll see my camera and my lights. And if I go back to rear camera, you will see the pool table. Now you always want to be on rear camera because that is generally the better camera. So we'll keep that as it is. Now the next one is really important. This is manual. So you've got auto lock. So this means that your phone will find what it thinks the best settings are, and then it will lock on to that. So you can see if I move away from the pool table, so we're in focus about here. If I move away, now it's not in focus because it's locked on that specific setting. We've got P, um, which again is to tap and lock focus and also have manual exposure. So this means that it will lock the focus that your phone has decided is correct and you can also go in and manually change your exposure. But the setting that I would use and that I advise you to all get familiar with and to start using is the M, which is full manual exposure and focus. And this gives you complete control and means that you can set everything up the way that you want it. But to do this, you have to understand all of the features. So let's go through them one by one. So first of all, we have got this one that says AW. Now this is your white balance. You can see that there are several options. This one is cloudy. So if you are outside on a cloudy day, you might want to put that one. We've got overcast. So this could be on a day where there's some sun and some cloud. We've, we've got daylight, we've got fluorescent, we've got sunrise and we've got incandescent. Now the two that you're generally probably going to use are the fluorescent or the daylight. These are the most common white balance settings. Now I'll do a more advanced video that goes into proper DSLR photography and explains white balance in greater detail, but essentially these are all different temperatures of color. 
So if you're using white light, if you've got white LED panels, for example, that will be the equivalent to daylight. So you'll want to be on the daylight setting to make sure that your colors are accurate for that light temperature. If you were filming with bulbs that were more of a yellow color, so tungsten, which is a completely different color temperature, then you would probably want to be on fluorescent or you might go on to incandescent. It depends how orange your lights are, but essentially you can see on this image, it's made everything look very blue. And that would be to counteract the fact that your lights would look very orange. All the lights that I'm using today are daylight, so everything looks normal for me on the daylight setting. So that's what I'm going to be using. Hopefully that made sense. With everything that I say in this video, just let me know in the comments if there's something that I need to clarify or you've got a question. Now the next icon we've got looks like a little target and this is for your focus. So again, I will explain focus and other things in a, another video about advanced features. But for the purposes of this app, by moving this line, you'll see that the focus changes. So if we're looking at our little balls here, we have got this yellow one in the middle has got a number four. So that will be a good example. You can see if we go to about one on the scale that the number four ball is quite sharp. But if we pull across further to the other end, it's a complete mess. It's gone blurry. So you want to, whatever your subject matter is in your scene, you want to move the focus to that specific thing. And this is important because your phone, like I say, won't be moving you'll stick it somewhere or you'll put it on a tripod. So you'll set your focus to your subject matter. And unless your subject matter is moving backwards and forwards, you won't need to go in and change this. You can see if I move this back a little bit and we turn it back to read the four, the four is now a little bit out of focus. So you don't actually have to move very far for the focus to change. So this might be one, one option that you want to put on automatic, which means that it will follow focus, but you don't want your phone to be searching for focus every picture if you're doing something professionally, because it's going to change the look of the frame and you might get this sort of bumping in and out, which is going to just look weird. So for this specific example, I'm going to leave it on one. And now we're going to go to the next icon where we've got this little plus and a minus. So we click on there. Now this is your ISO. So this is essentially the sensitivity of the sensor. And if you pull this right down to the low end, it is quite dark. So you can open up that sensitivity. You can bring more light into the picture by moving to the other end. But by doing this, it, it brings in noise and not like noise that you would hear, but visual noise. So you can see that the image, um, it look more grainy. It won't look as crisp. So you really don't want to push that too far. If, if your scene is not bright enough, then this is the last resort to change. So don't go straight in and change your ISO. Keep that as low as possible until you know that you haven't got any other options to brighten up your frame. So we're going to keep that on 50 for now. If we move to the next one, this is your shutter speed. So it's currently set to 1 50th, which would be correct if we were shooting video, but because we're shooting stills, we can move this up and down the scale. So again, if you move it to the left, it's going to be darker. The smaller the fraction, the darker it's going to be. So we don't want that at all, but we can pull it the other way. And as you can see, we are lightening our frame quite nicely. Now, these fractions are how much time of a second your iris on your camera is open for to take a picture. So the thing is, the further up you go, the longer it's going to take between pictures. So that means that everything has to remain still for a longer amount of time. So again, you don't really want to push it all the way up to the right hand end. You kind of want to keep it to 1 15th of a second or less. So let's put it on that for now. Then the next icon we've got is the zoom. 
So you can use the zoom. Uh, this is going to create a digital zoom. So similarly to the ISO setting where you are adding noise, the quality of your image is gonna be less crisp the more you zoom in. So if you can, keep the zoom to one and just move your phone closer or further away depending on how wide you want the picture. And then the final icon we have got is simply about uh, the rotation of the image. So say you had your phone mounted but it was upside down and the picture was upside down, you could flip the picture like this. If um, the picture was back to front, you could flip it like that and you can then just rotate it as well. So we're going to keep it on the X, we don't need any of that, but that would be how you could change which way your picture is displaying on your phone. So if we just tap the tick, that's all fine. So we're happy with that. Now, another thing to note that you can do on this onion skinning feature on the left hand side, um, there's also this little number one at the top. Now, what that will do is it tells you how many previous pictures you see. So if we actually go on to onion skin, you can see it's on one. We can see the previous picture. The picture that we took before is the static picture that's already there. If we tap it again, it changes to three. And you can see that there's more than one picture here. So you can see the last three pictures all overlaid. And then if we tap to five, now you're actually seeing the five pictures before this picture. So that can really help you with spacings. If you are using, if you're moving something in different increments, you can see all those pictures beforehand and that could be really helpful. Now the final thing we've got on this screen is this little icon at the bottom left hand corner which is a grid. So this essentially can help you frame your scene. If you look up the rule of thirds for example if I was shooting this pool table I might want to put the triangle on one of these lines because compositionally it just looks a bit nicer. If you frame your action on a point where the lines cross it often looks compositionally better. So definitely play around with using the grid as well. Hopefully this has all made sense to you and you now better understand where things are and how to use things. If you are interested in learning more about the pro version of this, then let me know in the comments and I will purchase that and explain the features in the pro version as well. If you found this video helpful and you want to see more videos like this from me, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I try to put out new videos on this channel every week.